Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Okay, this is a great question, actually. I think it's a really important question. You know, people, you know, I was, um, you know, I had the thing of being suicidal in addiction. You know, having absolutely extreme not wanting to exist and trying to get into oblivion through, through food and other addictions. And there's such an excruciating agony to be alive. Um, but the field of feelings process is a real confront because uh, the field of feelings, what the field of feelings is, which is lots of videos on YouTube, is just like being with feelings as they arise and not trying to make a story about them and trying to be with them until they pass. Mm -hmm. You know, and it, it's one of the most, it's a very advanced process if you do it in the way I've described because you're not allowed to hook into your thoughts and make a story about what's going on. You're not allowed to escape into the feeling through TV, Netflix, alcohol, drugs, uh, ringing a friend or doing anything, no escape. If you are under, if you're suicidal or extreme, you see, you have to, here's a, th I mean, there's a few things I'd say. Um, I mean, I, I was lucky to have a kind of a near-death-ish type experience, profound spiritual experience, and get to meet Dr. Hawkins. And I also, I had the privilege to get his energy, and his energy was like, when someone who's enlightened speaks, you know it's the absolute truth. And something so deep, even before all the layers of your ego knows that you're in front of someone who speaks from the authority of something that cannot die. Mm -hmm. And it's so profound. It, you, can't really be, you can't really read this in a book. You know, you get the, tr the, the energy is transmitted. As soon as you're in the presence of someone who's transcended their ego, you know, you know beyond thinking and beyond the fear and the terror of the ego that it's safe. It's safe to go through the screaming of feeling the feelings, which is agonizing if you're in those really dark places. Mm -hmm. And um, all I can say is, uh, so I just share my own experience. Like in the early days, I'd met Hawkins and it was like, I'm gonna, give, I'm gonna stop the food, which was my major addiction. And as soon as I said that, it was like my ego was like so angry, you know, because mm -hmm. the death, of, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, you have to understand, for, I'll try and explain it from my perspective so as not to, so as to make it easier. You know, my e you know, I identify with my ego my whole life. You know, this voice and this self-hatred mm -hmm. and this suffering, that was all I know I am. You know, constant suffering, constant anger, constant turmoil, mm -hmm. constantly trying to numb out on food and everything else to get relief from the world. But that is me. I don't know anything else, mm -hmm. you know. So if I try and give that up, it feels like I'm giving up my life. Because mm -hmm. I am my thinking, you know, to me at that point, I am my thinking, even though I feel like despair and suicidal, that's what I am. You know, I don't know anything else. This is me. I am my darkness and my thinking. Mm -hmm. So, and I don't want to feel the horrific volcanic feelings that come up if I was to stop my safety mechanisms of food and trying to escape, you know, the, the suffering of life. So, now, you know, to be told, but, you know, I, I was lucky to meet the teacher, but then to, you know, to stop the thinking, to stop, you know, the donuts, to stop all the escape mechanisms and to start to feel what comes up is like a volcano. Mm. And, you know, the thoughts and the negativity that comes up and the self-hatred and the thoughts of, of, of destruction and suicide are very, very strong. Mm -hmm. And basically the ego is saying, don't do this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do not feel, because uh, if you feel, you will not be able to bear it, you know, and it's better just for you to kill the body quickly mm -hmm. and escape, but do not feel and, and try not to think. Because all the ego is is like very dark feelings and thoughts of self-destruction. Mm -hmm. And that's all you identify with. So it's like to do this work is like, to f it's like the thing that you think you are, it feels like it's going to die, mm -hmm. you know. So it's like, you know, and even the thing that you think you are, which I call the ego, would rather you kill yourself, kill, well, kill the body. It says, you, the ego says, I am, I am my thinking and the body and the fear. So, you know, so better to kill the body than go through the fear mm -hmm. is what your ego will tell you. But, but the practice is don't identify with your thinking. 
because you know that that's said for a reason because your thinking will be do not do this process or even kill the body better jump off a bridge than do this you know and i am you without me you'll be dead that's what the ego says but i knew intrinsically meeting an enlightened teacher that i'm not my ego and that that terror and that hell and that voice that tells me i am you the voice says i am you and the, and the body says I am you, so it doesn't really say that. But, and the negativity, that's all I know, the negativity and the pain. So, but I knew intrinsically that that is not me. It's safe to go through that. Do not pick up the thoughts of destruction. Because that ego is wanting to carry on its suffering. It wants to carry on in fear. It wants you to carry on those negative thinking and those limited beliefs mm -hmm. and that self-destruction because that's all it wants to do. So it's a real, you know, I had panic attacks, mm -hmm. you know, and the first panic attack I binged, so the ego won the first battle because it's like volcanic feelings mm -hmm. and thoughts consistently use, do not feel this feeling, mm -hmm. eat the donuts, do not feel it. Second time I knew for God, for the infinite peace and love and the miracles that lie beyond the screaming voice of the ego, you know, for that, you know, I was willing to sacrifice what seems like my life. It's really sacrificing the life of my illusory ego. I think that's much more nicer. I'm willing to sacrifice the thing I think I am, and it's screaming, and even though I believe that is me my whole life, and that's the only thing I've known, I'm willing to put it up in the chopping block for a chance at the light of God. And that's an act of faith extreme faith mm -hmm. and if you if you ever meet someone who's gone through that and says it's safe to go through you have to trust it energetically because your ego won't want to won't want to take that on board <clears throat> what I've just said you have to get the energy of the person who said I went through the panic attack and something like screaming like I'm gonna die and I went through it and I was catapulted into the next level of my consciousness mm -hmm. and a huge layer of suffering dissipated from my life by going through that illusory, that illusory thing of the ego screaming, like to hold on to dominion of its negativity and its suffering. I have compassion, of course, because when the feelings are so extreme, the thinking to self-destruct is so high, and so it's easy then for the ego to win. But, you know, that's the thing of spiritual teachers, is they say, look, I went through it, and I experienced something that cannot die, and it was worth, the thing that I thought I was, was not me. I report from the other side. Mm -hmm. That screaming voice and that unending feeling, that thought, thing I thought I was, was not me. I went to another level of freedom, you know, by going through that, you know. So the thing, you, you know, it's, it's, it's hard because the thing you think you are is not you. Mm -hmm. And you have to go through the death of the thing that is not you mm -hmm. to experience more of you and more happiness and more freedom. Um, so it's not, it's not for the faint-hearted, but I think it's, you know, life, life is better than what the ego is going to give you, you know, which is unending suffering, really. Um, 